anyone who knows me also knows that I love technology, so it was no wonder that I wanted to learn more about the new Wi-Fi 7 protocol. Even though I don't exactly understand all aspects of the new features, I recognized it immediately that it was something great. When I checked my laptop specs, I realized that it was very advanced, just one step behind this new Wi-Fi 7 system, so I got curious whether I could do an upgrade in order to enjoy the latest and best available for my hardware. I have also checked and found information about the Wi-Fi 6 adapter that was factory installed into my laptop, which has confirmed it for me that my system had the hardware requirements for Wi-Fi 7. Although I've had no problems with the performance of this card, I figured that if there is an inexpensive way for an upgrade that will provide the best wireless options, then why not give it a shot? After doing an extensive research, I found the recommended upgrade card from a brand that was said to be the most reliable. I was told that this particular card would be the right option for me, as well as that this company makes the best of these type of cards. Various tech forums also mentioned it that this particular card was the most widely compatible one with Windows 11, and that not all brands of the same card performed as good as this one. And so, in the end, I decided to get this one. Delivery was fast, and I could hardly wait to do the upgrade. This Wi-Fi 7 card also updates my original Bluetooth 5.2 to 5.4. Let's see what we got in this little box, shall we? Okay, here I summarized the most important requirements, so stop the video if you need to, to go through them. So basically you need Windows 11 with the latest update or Linux operating systems, Intel 12th generation CPU or later does not work with AMD, and need a compatible socket. And uh, please check everything before making a purchase. Very simple user guide, download the software, install the card, then install the drivers for it, then enjoy it and have fun. The package also included extra screws and a screwdriver. Unfortunately, the screwdriver was not magnetic, so I had to use my own magnetic kit for the installation. After the 2x4TB SSD, 64GB of RAM and thermal cooler upgrades, it was time for the Wi-5 card as well. First, we have to disconnect the two antennas and unscrew the card. These are tiny connectors, so be very gentle and careful removing them. Install the new card into the socket, reconnect the antennas and finally screw the card into its place as it was before. A very simple operation that anyone can do. Just one more look to make sure everything is alright. Best if you find and download the drivers BEFORE the upgrade. They are indicated with the same package number, however, both the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth driver package must be downloaded. Many people make the mistake that they only download the Wi-Fi drivers, then find out that their Bluetooth is not working at all. And that's because they both have their own driver packages. Find your device manager to confirm the upgrade. There it is, listed under the Network Adapters section. You can also go into the Advanced Options just to confirm that all the necessary features are enabled that make this card so fast. 
Then check and confirm your Bluetooth protocol as well. Under the Advanced menu, you will find the LMP number. This number corresponds to your Bluetooth version. In this case, 13.xxx means Bluetooth 5.4. We are not yet done, however, because in order to avoid any driver issues or interference, we need to remove all the old drivers. Click View, Show Hidden Drivers. Now go through the list and remove everything that is not in use any longer, indicated by a light, transparent blue color in the list. Just make sure you won't remove any solid blue colored drivers. Then do the same under the network adapter list. Take your time, nice and easy. Finally, run some tests to make sure your card is working fine. You can find several reliable speed test websites for this purpose. Just make sure both the download and upload speeds get tested. Well, for me, these were the wireless speed numbers before, but there's a reason why I can't see any speed improvements. In the system, network, Properties section, we can see that our home network is only a 5 GHz system, which lacks the latest 6 GHz antennas that are vital part of the brand new Wi-Fi 7 protocol. So, even though we can confirm the presence of the new Wi-Fi 7 card, the system from which we get our internet connection is still the old one. In my case, I got the Verizon Fios Wi-Fi router which only uses 5 GHz antennas and lacks the 6 GHz capabilities of the new Wi-Fi 7 system. Which means, if you want to utilize the full capabilities of our brand new Wi-Fi 7 upgrade card, you are going to have to upgrade to a Wi-Fi 7 router. And based on my searches on Amazon, even the most basic Wi-Fi 7 routers are quite expensive. So either we spend some cash on the upgrade, or wait till our service provider comes out with new routers. And that's for everyone to decide for themselves. As always, thanks for watching.